for the next uh, so for the next few episodes I'm basically turning my attention to uh, moving from down below to up here it's two rooms a bathroom and there's a staircase I want to take out the staircase and make a um, um, small kitchen and the two rooms you know I need an attic bedroom closet a wardrobe I need uh, an extra bed table some kitchen furniture <sighs> I have when I made some preliminary designs I thought what 10 days I don't think it's gonna be 10 days there's no water there's no electricity there's no heating but I have to move because uh, we have to start uh, I have to start working on the last apartment the fifth one below and one of the main reasons now is that I have to bring all the tubes from the water and the heating into that apartment electricity too so I have to make a hole in the wall um, and I thought that maybe I can pull everything until this house but it's gonna be too far there's a uh, there's a staircase there that I would have to break open and it's like 25 meters because basically we have down below in the garage that's gonna be the the heating room the water distribution center we have the boilers there etc we brought everything down there and from there we distributed into the house or into the two barns so I have to do this separately uh, below I will have a common area for everyone to access so it's not a lot of space maybe about 40 square meters even less and uh, I want to call it a little bit my tiny house probably gonna feel a little bit like constructing a camper ten days mm. the problem is a little bit uh, with the weather you know it's beautiful weather during the day it's September it's fantastic look at that sky but from September forwards, the, um, the nights, they get chilly. So you can get temperatures like 26, 27 degrees during the day. And they, they tend to drop to 10, 11, and maybe even lower in October. Uh, and I can tell you from experience, below 10 inside these houses, even though they have 50 centimeter stone walls, the nights are not, or the evenings are, are not comfortable at all. So I'm still thinking about the heating, maybe a pellet stove. Last year the pellet price during COVID, you know, they went from five, five euros back to up to 12, 13. I thought that's crazy, so I uh, used a lot of wood. But uh, this year the prices are back to normal, so I think I'm going to trust the pellet stove. I have to isolate ceilings. Organize a day with the plumber, look for the electricity. But first, I have to I have to basically clean all the room again. You know, it's like two months ago that I started to clean that old place. 
and I put most of my stuff up here because below it was a mess and full. And now I'm basically obliged to clean up the mess below, make some space and bring everything from upstairs downstairs. Yeah, it feels like triple work sometimes. And uh, in an ideal situation, I was going to transfer myself up here and then take a break. I don't know. So when you come back, you have a new clean house where you can stay. Oh, would love that, but we'll see what happens. Fantastic day. It's one of the things I love about Italy, you know. And here on this hill, I always have sun. It's south faced that way. And even tonight, tonight was chilly. It was like 11 degrees. But now it's like sunny blue skies, probably reach 25 degrees today. Oh, yeah. Right. Do some stretching and start working. That looks different. More space. I can put my clothes a little bit there for the moment. So let's go and clean up upstairs. So yeah, everything has got to go here. Because the first thing that I'm going to do, put a new ceiling with insulation because it's not isolated at the moment. And I don't like those beams, they weren't even sand it down so oh, the material for the next project has arrived uh, i can start a file in Yameria. So handy, I just got it, and it's just in time, it measures everything, length, square meters, <laughs> that's fantastic. If I want to construct upstairs, but if I do that, I have to construct on top of the beam, so I have to know exactly where the beams are. 
Uh, well, I can go upstairs and check it out there. Yeah. Where do I set up my table? My table saw down here or up inside? Outside, disadvantage when it rains, I can't work. I have to climb a lot of stairs, but the stairs I have to climb anyway. If I work inside, I have a lot of dirt. I have to bring all the wood inside, four meters long, five meters long. Eh, I think the best solution is work outside. Prepare everything here. Keep a clean workspace upstairs. Yeah, that's going to be the best solution. <coughs> Well, a good preparations is like half a job done. Got everything here. Isolation, screws. Let's start from that part. First I'm gonna take a break. Yeah. Well, the first two are in. The first one is always the hardest and I noticed that the wall is definitely not straight and the plastering quality, uh, it's mediocre at best. So I have to think about that. Maybe give another coat, although it's been painted, but uh, can still give it another coat. Now I'll get the isolation put it in, especially in those corners and we just go on, see how far we get right, I will use that as an example to take the cottage right and as you can see ultimately I decided to put the table inside it's a little bit more walking but like that I can leave everything even if it rains so, and if it's hot outside, you can still work comfortably inside. And the extra meters, well, I guess uh, I can eat a little bit more. Maybe buy myself a bag of chips one time. <laughs> yeah. Start to see some difference. Try to finish it up to that beam. But then I saw something disturbing because this is really not... I don't know, how could they have fitted it like that? But it's definitely not straight, so it's going to be a bit of a problem to get it done. Maybe I'll do that corner first, up to the beam, and then we see. It not only looks much cleaner, and it will feel much cleaner, and it's isolated, so, uh, but uh, I like it uh, much more like this. I'm gonna keep that natural color and, uh, you know, I'll have only those huge, the big, big uh, support beams uh, visible, much nicer. Well, it's a good start. 
I guess it's time to call it quits for today because it's getting dark. I don't have light in here. I don't have light where I have my saw. So maybe I'll just clean up a little bit. I have to go back one time to cut sometimes like half a millimeter, half a centimeter because I, I tend to cut it too sharp. Oh, having said that, the first four took me like ages. Oh, uh, beautiful day. Like this, the weather is nice. Temperatures dropped, but we always have the sun. Oh, we're getting there. Oh, it looks so much better. Uh, it continues to be a beautiful day, it's not too hot. I love the view from above here, really, really nice. Reverse engineering the work from someone else. I think that all the power sockets are connected. I thought it was going through this wall. Because there's a collection point down there. Now I'm going to check the other side because if that's true, it's not good. 
So we have one tube that's going down here. I have a beam underneath and they brought the electricity external tube inside and then they connected these these four power sockets. The problem is that I'm going to need more than electricity here so I'm going to have to do something else. Maybe I will leave this one for this room and I'll bring another tube from downstairs into the other room. So I guess I have to do some rethinking tonight because I thought that wall was just um, maybe a natural stone wall but it looks like it's, uh, they actually built a counter wall from bricks and um, I want to make something like a sopalco which is a place where I can store things and the bed will be enclosed but that means that maybe I can bring the beams inside the wall instead of building a structure from wood. Uh, and also means that probably the best way for electricity is just to make, make the tubes go into the wall and basically replace everything, put it a little bit higher. And I think about the light because I want to have maybe even um, something like um, an, a LED strip underneath. So, new plan. I have to get dirty. Make all those. First, I will do all the measurements. And then I have to cut in that brick wall and in behind here. I was hoping I could avoid that. So getting dirty again. Madonna. What a mess, but uh, in the end it's better like this because uh, you know how your electricity works. It's just that reverse engineering is really not, uh, not a nice thing to do. Also made a big hole there, so I have another point where I can bring everything together. Scatola. So actually, the electricity is coming from there and it's going down, it's not coming from downstairs. So. This is actually funny. They left a piece of paper inside. <laughs> Let's see what it says. Attenzione. Filo di terra 
utilizzato come fase sotto tensione ma eh. ma I better do the other room too so I can get it over with, clean it up and then go back to my favorite work which is working with wood Alright, so maybe something like this Boop. Ah. Right. Something magical happened today. My plumber came by for uh, about an hour and uh, I'm going to take away this water. I'm not going to share how I went about my business for the past three years, but most of the time my toilet was outside. Now, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna give it a good scrub tonight and I'm going to share a moment of pure joy, a first time that I have a bathroom. My God. And a bit there. Quite happy. I made all those openings, so know what to do. Tomorrow I can start closing everything. I need to, to buy myself a couple of things, make a list. One morning I'll go get that, run some errands, and then uh, start building. Oh. I like it and I'm never going to regret that I spent this day redoing the electricity, never, it's fantastic, it's just that it's so dirty. Ah. <laughs>